Well, hello and welcome. In this presentation, we will be looking at compound interest and how this can be modelled using recurrence relations. Yeah. As you probably appreciate, compound interest is a non-linear form of interest, such as the graph shows here. Our account balance, or the amount that's in our account, will increase in a non-linear fashion effectively because we are earning interest on our interest. And previously you probably have applied a formula that looks a little bit like this. Uh, we don't, we're not going to be doing it this way, so I'll just hide that away. What we'll be doing is applying the recurrence rule, Vn equals R to the power of N multiplied by V0. Now yeah, just remembering V0 is my initial value. R is basically the rate by which my value is increasing and N is the number of time periods. Probably best to look at a couple of examples just to clarify this. So I have a sequence of numbers 2, 4, 8, 16, 32 and the way I move from one to the next is multiplying by 2. That multiplication factor, that is my value of R. The initial value, such as 2 here, that one there, is my V0. And we can say the rule to find my next term is I look at my current term and then I multiply by 2. And likewise, the recurrence rule, Vn equals R to the power of N times V0. So, let's have a look at an example. Now, Sam deposits $2,000 into the bank, which earns 1% interest every month. Okay, you've got a good deal there, Sam. What will Sam's account balance be after five months? Now, what I can do is I can have a go at calculating the value of R. Well, I need R anyway. So R will be one, because that's that's his original amount, which is going to be increased. That's the plus. 1% is going to be increased by 1% every month. So it becomes 1.01. .01. So I could use my TI Inspire or any other calculator and just go 2000 enter, then multiply by 1.01 .01, enter, 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 and I'll end up with an answer. That's one way to tackle the problem, and it's quite valid. The other way is to actually use the recurrence rule. My initial value, 2000, my R, 1.01. .01. And the rule, my value after N time periods, in this case will be five months, equals R to the power of N times V0. My R, well, 1.01. .01. That's the rate by which I'm in increasing to the power of 5, because there's 5 time periods, times 2,000. And there you have it, the same answer again. So, we'll move on to the next example. Now, let's look at the second example. Armit deposited, just like Sam did, $2,000 in the bank, which earns 1% interest compounding every month. Again, a good deal. How many months will it take for Armit's account balance to exceed $3,000? Well, if you look here, I ne he needs to multiply by 1.01 .01 for each month. So he'll take his balance, multiply by 1.01 .01 to get his new account balance. And multiply by 1.01 .01 again, new account balance. Now, Armit could just use his TI Inspire and basically enter 2000 and then multiply this value by 1.01. .01. Then he'd enter again and again and again and again and count how many times he gets, it takes him to get to 3000. Or you can look at the recurrence rule and say, well, my initial value is 2000. My value of R, 1.01. .01. And 
the recurrence rule, I'm saying well, 3000 is my V and that's where I want to get to. And I'm looking at 1.01 .01 to the power of N, which is the number of months, multiplied by 2000. And I need to solve for N. So if I use my TI Inspire, I could solve for 3000 equals 1.01 .01 to the power of n multiplied by 2000 and I'm trying to solve for n. You'll notice here it gives me an answer of 40.75 months. I could just do a double check here and I can say well okay 40 months I'll have a balance of 2977 which is not quite 3000. 41 months it will have a balance of well, just a touch over three thousand dollars. So there you have it. It will be forty-one months. Again, I need to round this to a whole number because my interest will be compounded at the end of each month. Right. Let's just move on to the th the third and final example. Now, let's leave all of this up on the screen because it's a fairly complicated example here. Now, Harry borrows $20,000 from the bank. Now, he is very mindful of his finances and does not wish to pay back more than $5,000 in interest. Calculate the interest rate per annum. Harry should endeavour to obtain if interest is calculated monthly and the duration of his loan is five years. Now, what this means, he starts with 20,000 and he's going to multiply by some number which we don't know. This number, this is our R value, is dependent on the interest rate. And this multiplication is going to go on and on and on until we get to $25,000. Now, so you could say that my initial value is $20,000. Now the duration of the loan will be 60 months. That's because there are five years. 12 times 5 is 60. So V60 will be equal to 25,000. Now my value of R is effectively 1 plus, now my rate is interest calculated monthly you'll see here the interest is calculated monthly so I need to work out my monthly interest rate so I need to take the annual rate and divide that by 12 to give me a monthly rate then I divide it by 100 to convert to a decimal so that is effectively the value that I have for R, but I don't know what this R is here, and I need to use the solve function on my calculator. So 25,000 has to equal 1 plus R divided by 12, all divided by 100. And that has to be raised to the power of 60, because there are 60 months, and I need to multiply that by my initial value, which is $20,000, and I am solving for the value R. Now just be very mindful when you enter this part in your calculator that the R divided by 12 is not entered as a fraction as such but, but enter it as R divided by 12. And you'll end up with two values here. There's a negative value and a positive we are looking for this value here, which is 4.47. So the interest rate that Harry would be after would be 4.47% per annum. That's a fairly complicated problem, but just have a think about it and, and try. Just try putting that number in your calculator and seeing whether you can come up with this answer here. So until next time, I hope this has given you an appreciation of applying, I suppose, our geometric sequences or series to come up with 
solving problems associated with compound interest. So until next time, good maths and bye for now.